Good morning, homespun friends. Here I am in a place where I am quite often, and that is sitting in the truck outside of one of our hospitals in the area, um, waiting for him to complete his visits for today. And I thought I would take this opportunity to begin to share with you the a little bit more about the sermon series that we've been talking about. And you know, I told you that we were going to be talking about brokenness this week and that we were going to be talking about my favorite Bible story. And that is the story from Ruth. And I thought it would be neat for us to share a couple of videos about the story of Ruth and Naomi because it is precious and dear to my heart. And I think it will, it will be the same for you. So here we are, friends, and I'm just going to take my Bible open and share with you about Ruth. Now, many of you might have already heard the story of Ruth and Naomi, and, and you know it very well, and you've read it many times and studied it. Others of you may barely know it, and then some of you maybe don't know anything about the story of Ruth and Naomi. Um, it is a wonderful story about how God can bring restoration and healing to a broken heart. And so let's begin by looking at Ruth in chapter 1. I'm going to read some verses straight from the Bible, and then I'm simply going to tell you um, some parts of, of the story instead of reading it directly. Now, back in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. And so a man from Bethlehem and Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab with his wife and his two sons. Now, this man's, a man's name was named uh, Elimelech. And Elimelech and his wife Naomi had two sons. They were Malon and Kilion. And they left Bethlehem, where they were from, and they went to live in Moab. Now, most of us know Bethlehem as the place where Jesus was born. We know the old hymn, the Christmas hymn, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. We also know that Bethlehem is where King David was from. And this little area was known for shepherding sheep. And this is where Elimelech and his wife Naomi lived. And during this time, there was a great famine that came about in the land of Bethlehem. And food was very hard to find. And they decided that they were going to leave Bethlehem. And they were going to travel until they found a place that had food. And they ended up in the land of Moab. Now, Moab was probably about 50 miles from Bethlehem. And so, even though that doesn't seem very far to you and me, since we have cars and all types of quick transportation, 50 miles was a good walking distance in that day. So, when they arrived in Moab, there was food there, and they decided to stay. The only bad part about it was that Moab was considered enemy territory. It was a place where pagan gods were worshipped, and the God of Israel was not, um, was not revered. And so... And Limelech and Naomi and their two sons ended up in a land that was not very fond of those who came from Bethlehem. And, you know, in our own lives, sometimes we end up in enemy territory. We may not mean to. We may be in such a terrible circumstance in our personal life that we just want to run. And then we want run right into the arms of the enemy. And that's what Elimelech and Naomi did and their two sons. Even so, things went okay for them um, as they first arrived. They were able to have food. But the Bible tells us that not long after they arrived, Elimelech died. And so he left his wife and his two sons um, in, in this land of Moab. Now, during this time, the two sons had grown up, and they married women that were from Moab. And so they married into um, the family of the enemy. And the two women that they married, their names were Ruth and Orpah. They were the daughter-in-laws to Naomi. And they were married for about 10 years, and then both sons died. Now, we do not know very much about what happened to them, but we know that both sons died in close proximity to one another as far as time goes. And this left Naomi without her husband and without either one of her sons. And... It would be difficult enough to lose your spouse when you still have, you know, young children at home. But then imagine losing both of those children to death and how horrible 
that was for Naomi. She was pretty much helpless at that time. She didn't know what to do. But word came to her that back in Bethlehem, things were better. And there was food now. And so she decided to take both of her daughters-in-law, gather up their belongings, and move back home. And while she was on the road going back home to Bethlehem, she got up one morning and decided that the best thing for her to do was to send both of her daughters-in-law back home to their moms. Because there were no grandchildren there. And both of these girls, <clears throat> they could have married again and had what Naomi called security in their lives. Because at that time, without a husband, women had almost no security at all. And so she told them that morning, she gathered Ruth and Orpah together, and she said, girls, you need to go home to your mothers, and you need to go back to your gods, and I will go on to my home and to my God. Well, they cried and cried. Both Orpah and Ruth said, please don't make us leave. We do not want to leave you. But um, she encouraged them to go back home. Now, Orpah turned and went home, even though she was sad to do it. She went back to her parents. But Ruth would not leave. And this scripture is one that is probably very, very familiar to you. My husband and I quoted this to each other in our wedding. And it says, Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. And this is what Ruth said to her mother-in-law and said, please don't ask me to leave you. I want to go with you to your home. I want to claim your people as my people. I will live in your home just like it's my home. And your God will become my God. And what a great testimony of faith on behalf of Ruth in doing this. And so Naomi and Ruth traveled on until they arrived in Bethlehem. <clears throat> and the Bible says that when they returned to Bethlehem, all of Naomi's friends came running out. They were so excited to see that Naomi was home because they hadn't seen her in a long time. And they said, look, it's Naomi. Is it really Naomi? Is she back? And she turned to them. And with a very sad spirit, she said, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Now the word Mara means bitter. And she said, call me Mara because the Lord has made things very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and sent tragedy my way? So here, in a sense, she was sort of angry with God and upset with him at the lot in life that she had been dealt. And you know what? God still had favor on her. He understood her heartbreak. He understood her confusion. He understood her sorrow. It says, So Naomi, Naomi returned from Moab, and she was accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. And that is how she was known in this territory. In Bethlehem, where she was, she was known as a Moabite. And they were considered enemies to Naomi's people. They arrived in Bethlehem in the late spring, at the beginning of the barley harvest. So I'm going to stop there for right now, and that is what I want you to ponder on today, is what is it in your life that has caused you maybe to question God, that has caused you heartbreak, that has made you sometimes feel like maybe God has given up on you. Because I want to tell you, friends, God did not give up on Naomi, and God has not given up on you. This is just the beginning of the story, and there is more wonderful things to come in the future for Ruth and Naomi. Thank you for spending time with me, friends. I look forward to sharing more from Ruth with you next time. Bye-bye.